Hey everyone, this is Nancy from New Travel Escapes, bringing you another video telling you all about our thoughts and experiences after vacationing at the El Cid Spa and Beach Resort Complex. It's a five-star all-inclusive family resort complex located near Puerto Morelos in the Riviera Maya, Mexico. It's about a 25 to 30 minute drive from the Cancun airport, depending on traffic. Now, El Cid Spa and Beach Resort is made up of three different resorts within one whole complex. The Hotel Marina El Cid, Ventus El Cid and Ventus Ha El Cid. This is a stay at one, play at three situation. So let's dive in and explore which one of these resorts might be right for you. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We have made separate videos about each individual resort within the complex going into nitty gritty details. But in this video, I want to share with you what the complex is like as a whole and share with you my thoughts on which resort within the complex to choose. If you stay in one of these three resorts, you have access to everything. But what's that like? If you have access to everything, what are the pros and cons of choosing to book your room at one resort within the complex or a different one? Is it only based on price? I guess it could simply be based on price and then it's a really easy decision made so you don't need to watch this video. But what if things are priced similarly? Then how do you choose? Well, we have vacationed at the El Cid complex six times with different size groups and different group demographics. From a large three generation family celebration group, a family of five, an all girls week, and even just the two of us. So I feel like we're fairly well versed in which resort within the complex might work best for which type of group. So we're going to walk you through this entire complex and as we go, I'll give you some of our thoughts and ideas about where you might want to stay based on what your priorities might be. After departing the airport, you will arrive at your chosen resort's lobby. Arrival and check-in is pretty much standard across all four resorts. You will get a wristband indicating whether you are a guest of Marina El Cid, Ventus El Cid, or Ventus Ha El Cid. There are different colors for guests over 18 and those under 18, so servers know who's allowed to drink alcohol and who is not. Make sure that if you find your wristband getting loose or it's no longer fitting properly, take it to the front desk for a replacement. They will replace it if there is a problem with the wristband. Don't risk losing it. If you lose it, you will need to pay a fee for its replacement. Now, I can't remember the exact amount. I think it was somewhere around $80, but not inexpensive. If it breaks or gets stretched out, they will replace it for you if you bring it to them. But there's a charge if you lose it. They need to know that you didn't just give your wristband to some beach walker who's now enjoying the facilities for free. So it kind of makes sense. At check-in, you will also receive one towel card per person. This is for beach or pool towels. You can trade the towel card into any of the towel huts at any of the three resorts and exchange it for a fresh towel or just get your card back at the end of the day and use it for the next day's towel. Sometimes you may see a bin for dirty towels, but be sure to not put it in the bin unless you get your towel card back from the towel attendant first. You will need to sign something at check-in that indicates you know to return the towel cards at checkout or incur a $40 lost towel charge per card not returned. You will get room key cards. Although your wristband has some type of RFID in it that restaurants can scan, it isn't one that will open your door. I really do prefer the wristband that's also your room key, but maybe in the future. They don't have it right now. No matter which resort within the El Cid complex you check into, you will need to pay a resort fee of between $15 to $20 USD per night. On our most recent trip, we paid $135 USD for our seven night stay. You may also need to pay for Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is sometimes included and sometimes it isn't. We have learned over the years to never make assumptions about Wi-Fi at El Cid properties. They use a Wi-Fi code system and this means that they give you a code and you can use it one time and put it on one device for your trip. You can't use the code on multiple devices and you can't even move it from one device to the other. 
So if you have a code for your cell phone, you will not be able to disconnect your phone from it and then use that code on your laptop. In the package we booked, it said specifically that the package included two Wi-Fi codes. Some packages don't include Wi-Fi, so be sure to take a screenshot of your specific vacation package inclusions, especially if it says it includes Wi-Fi. If it doesn't, it's usually $15 per day per device for Wi-Fi or $60 per week per device for Wi-Fi. And again, you can't pay for one code and move it around to different devices. Those are the prices at the time of this video. I have no idea what they're going to change to. But I know what you're thinking. In this day and age, why isn't Wi-Fi standard? Well, I really don't know. Just think of it as a forced digital detox. You will also either check in at the normal check-in desks or in the Platinum Club lounge. Each lobby has a Platinum Club lounge attached to it. It is for the exclusive use of the guests who have upgraded to Platinum Club. They have some higher end alcohols at the Platinum Club bar and they often have little snacks that change throughout the day. Now, with that being said, we may as well quickly dive into whether or not Platinum Club is worth it. And of course, these are my opinions. You do what you want. To do that, we need to first look at what the regular all-inclusive includes and compare it to the Platinum Club additional perks. I'm going to put on the screen what the website says the all-inclusive entails and also the additional Platinum Club perks. So let's have a look. The all-inclusive plan includes your accommodations, of course, and in that there's a mini bar with beverages and a coffee maker and it's restocked daily. It includes all of your meals. It lists some, some restaurants. It includes all of your drinks. It includes 24-hour room service and your snacks, nightly entertainment or shows, it specifically says resort fee and then in parentheses not included. I don't know why that's there, but it is what it is. You also have use of their tennis courts with the rackets and the balls and there's pickleball now. There's water sports and those are really cool. They're located on the beach. You can just sign them out. There are biking tours, which is really fun. There are daytime beach and pool activities programs in the Ventus pool and in the main pool. There's also volleyball and all kinds of stuff going on at the beach. There's a kids club for ages four to 12. And I actually think that's four to 11. I believe when we were there, the teens club starts at 12 and the 12 to 17 year olds can go into the teens club, but you can figure that out when you're there if your child is close. Use of the gym, there's two of them, taxes and gratuities. Now the platinum all-inclusive plan adds, has these additions, sorry. Top of the line extra comfortable bed linens, dedicated check-in and check-out areas in the Platinum Club Lounge, butler service, a pillow menu, welcome fruit basket and wine bottle, turn down service, Betsy Fours upon arrival, room aroma menu, bathrobes and slippers, an umbrella, a beach bag, a scale, yep, a scale, resort fee, again, not included in parentheses, complimentary access to the Platinum Club Lounge, and rental of in-room environmental probiotics. Uh, I've got to get back to that in a second. Now, we have paid out for Platinum Club three times and three times we have not. So although I can't tell you what's worth paying more for, everyone has very different ideas on that, I can speak for our group though and what we thought was important. So let's look at that list. Top of the line linens. Well, having done both, I didn't notice a difference at all. I did like the addition of a pillow menu, but did I need it? No, I was fine. There were four pillows per bed, so we really didn't need it. I'm not even sure if I remembered to use it as a perk when we had Platinum Club, but it's there. There's dedicated check-in and check-out. They're both in the lobby, separated by glass doors, so that location really doesn't make a big difference to me. Butler service, well, that's nice, but honestly, it's not the butler service that you may be used to at some other resorts. Our first time paying for Platinum, our butler took us to our room, made our dinner reservations for the week, and we really didn't see much of him after that. When we vacationed here for my all-girls trip, we all paid up for Platinum. Well, that was a joke because none of us ever saw our butlers for every different person we went with. We didn't see him again after check-in, and we all had different butlers, so I don't know, maybe it was a bad week to bottle, who knows? But the only perk we actually got was the room location 
and an incense stick by the bathtub. Our last time paying for Platinum Club was only because we wanted a two bedroom and many times you're only able to book the large rooms if you book Platinum. Our butler that final time was better than any of the previous ones, but honestly that bar wasn't set very high. Our butler reserved us a place on the Platinum Club beach area with our names or we could have chosen one by the pool. He arranged all of our dinner reservations and a perk that they don't tell you about is that they tend to save the prime dining hours for Platinum guests. And some Platinum guests are able to book the whole week in advance. Otherwise, you have to only book two days at a time. They won't let you book your whole week. So for dinner, early and later seem to be available to non-Platinum guests, but those 6, 6.30, 7 and 7.30 dinner times are held for Platinum guests. They do not tell you this, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. So this is only of value to us when we're traveling with little kids who really need to dine earlier and then go to bed. With kids who are good to dine a little bit later, then it's a non-starter. So, welcome fruit, fruit basket and sparkling wine. No, I can get that at any bar. Maybe not the fruit basket, but whatever. Not valuable to me. Turn down service, well, it's hit or miss if it actually happens at all, so I'm not willing to pay more for it. Bathrobes and slippers, we don't really use and we don't really notice if they're not there, but if you're a huge bathrobe and slipper on vacation kind of person, you either brought your own or you're gonna love the ones at the Platinum Club. Uh, the beach bag they give you is a nice souvenir. I can't say that I've actually ever used mine again, but I do still actually, I have it. A bathroom scale. Really? Who calls that a perk worth paying for? I might actually, at an all-inclusive resort, pay for it not to be in my room. But I use it to weigh the suitcase, so however. Access to the Platinum Club Lounge with higher-end alcohol is nice, but you have to go up to the lobby for it. There isn't a lounge by any of the pools except one. There is a Platinum Lounge by the Family Infinity Pool. The contradiction here is that you have paid for the higher-end alcohol with Platinum Club, but you have to go and get it yourself. So is it worth it or not? Well, that's totally up to you. It's very personal choice. The Platinum Club lounges also have a, free, a few computers that you can make use of if you're only partially digitally detoxing. Finally, that rental of in-room environmental probiotics available at an additional cost. Now someone, please explain to me in the comments what this is and if you have used it, what do they charge you for it? I have no idea what this is. So in conclusion of all of this for us, and again, I'm only speaking for us, we only book Platinum Club when it comes with the room size that we want. So when we want a swim up suite, it is only available as a Platinum Club level room. Would I ever bother with upgrading a junior suite to a Platinum Junior Suite? Nope. I don't think it's worth the extra expense, but what I, I would rather spend that money elsewhere. But again, that's me, you do you. Let's dive into the dining because that's one of the top reasons that you book an all-inclusive resort. Where some of the restaurants are located may also determine which of the three resorts you choose for your room location. Remember, you can dine at all of the restaurants within all three resorts and nothing's really too far away. You can easily walk or request a golf cart. Here's a quick rundown of each of the different restaurants, their cuisine type, and where in the property they're located. Let's start with La Marina. Now that restaurant is actually located in the marina at the Hotel Marina El Cid, so way off to the far side. And as the name suggests, it's a seafood restaurant absolutely worth the extra steps to get over there. Alhambra is their buffet restaurant that is in the Hotel Marina lobby. El Alcazar is Mediterranean and that's also in the Marina lobby. Hacienda Arecif is Mexican and it's in the Hotel Marina off by the main pool. Trattoria de Giulio, that's Italian. That's kind of central in the resort. It's still considered Hotel Marina El Cid, but it's also really close to Ventus. Mercado de Dolores is the food court, and it's located at Ventus. Ile de France is their French restaurant. It's also located at Ventus. 
Kobo is their Japanese teppanyaki or hibachi, whichever name you would like to call. It's the show cooking, and it's located over at Ventus Ha. And Akat is the Ibero-American, and that's also located at Ventus Ha. Overall, we found the food and beverages to be good. Oh, I forgot to mention, you also have room service. You do need to make a la carte dinner reservations with either your butler or the concierge, as I already mentioned, but there are no limits to the number of a la carte dinners that you can book. Some resorts do limit the number of a la cartes you're allowed. El Cid does not. So if you're planning on trying all of the restaurants, then which resort you choose to book at doesn't really make a difference. But if you are a buffet diner and you prefer a good themed buffet over a la carte, then you may want to stay at the Hotel Marina El Cid Resort. They have the only dinner buffet on the property, Alhambra, and it changes theme every night. You also don't need any reservations to dine at the buffet. So if you prefer more freestyling, I'm going to go eat when I want, and you really prefer buffets, then I would say book your room at the Hotel Marina El Cid. Other than that, the restaurants are spread out fairly equally between all of the three properties. Each resort has a breakfast buffet, but the biggest again is back at Alhambra at the Hotel Marina. The French restaurant, the Italian restaurant, they also set up smaller but tasty breakfast buffets in the morning. Akat Adventus Ha has a small breakfast buffet, but they only open it if occupancy is high, so don't count on it. A full-time breakfast buffet will probably be in place at Ventus Ha when the new construction is completed and they double their occupancy. Otherwise, Ventus Ha guests need to walk to any of the other restaurant offerings for breakfast, if a cat isn't offering it that day. Just a side note, the breakfast room service at Ventus Ha is minimal. Just some continental breakfast style options. So if you're a big breakfast person, Ventus Ha has the fewest options on the property. Unlike other resorts you may have been to, there are no lunch options or food trucks around any of the pools. They try to keep the food mess indoors. For lunch, you can choose the Hacienda Arecif beside the Hotel Marina main pool, and they offer a nice lunch buffet. That's a Mexican restaurant at night, but it's a lunch restaurant during the day. There's a grill station set up in the Hacienda lunch buffet, and I highly recommend going there if you're in the mood for some fresh fish, chicken, or a steak that's cooked to order. Mercado de Dolores is the food court that has the most diverse options for lunch. There is something for everyone in there, with about eight different cuisine options, and maybe more actually. A cat at ha is the only a la carte lunch option in the complex, and it was my personal favorite. You can also grab a quick sandwich or pastry from the Aromas Coffee Shop if that is more your speed. Let's move on and talk about the pools, because that also might help you determine where to book your room. The Hotel Marina main pool is huge. It currently has the only swim-up bar on property. It has a toddler area with a small slide, but the highlight of this pool is the jumping rock. They call it a diving rock, but the lifeguards aren't going to let you dive off of it. There is also a water slide winding around the diving rock. No, in advance, the water slide is not for the faint of heart. The lifeguard warned Raven to put both hands on the sides, but content doesn't get itself, she said, so this is how that turned out. Now, Raven has recovered. There are lifeguards for the jumping rock and the water slide. There's a pool volleyball court permanently set up in this pool as well. If you have kids that are going to use this pool most days, then it would definitely be more convenient to have a room as close to this pool as possible. There are always activities going on at this pool throughout the day, so you may want to get chairs set up here earlier rather than later. There's a family beachfront infinity pool that's located halfway between Hotel Marina El Cid and Ventus, and it's the only heated pool in the winter. So if it were me and I had little ones that aren't really going to be using the jumping rock or that water slide, then I would be trying to book a room nearest to this pool especially if we were traveling during the winter months. The Ventus main pool is huge. It has a couple of bridges, a toddler area, and lots of space to spread out and have fun. It's right beside Mercado de Dolores for lunch and the pickleball courts. It's a bit quieter than the marina pool, but there are still activities going on here, so if you think this is where you're going to spend majority of your time, 
then I would suggest a room on the Ventus property. The junior suites at Ventus surround the main pool and I really don't think there's a bad room location over there. Ventus also has the biggest adults only pool and hot tub area on the property. It is an infinity pool and it, there are two hot tubs that are heated, one on either side of that adult infinity pool. Ventus also has an adults only bar and semi nightclub in the lobby. So if I were traveling as a group of adults, maybe a bachelorette or a group of friends, then I would book a suite on the Ventus property to have close accessibility to the adults only pool and the apnea bar. Ventus Ha currently has the smallest main pool of the three, but it still has a toddler zero entry area on one end, then the main pool, and then a heated spa pool at the far end. The Ventus Ha pool is the quietest as well. They're building a new section of Ha, so I expect that that will include another pool in the future. Now, if I were traveling as a couple or celebrating a baby moon or a honeymoon, I would book a room at Ha. The icing on the cake at Ha is the roof pool and bar. It is on the top of the building overlooking the mangroves and it's fantastic. There is no chance of kids wandering up there because it specifically said beside the elevator button that it is adults only. So if I were looking for a relaxing adults only tropical resort, I would choose to book my room at Ha. Again, you have access to everything, but your room location where you're going to spend the most of your time is helpful. If we look at the suite options, there really aren't too many differences between the three resorts. There's a few slight ones, but let me go through them. They all offer junior suites, family suites, one, two, and three bedroom suites. And then there's a few extra categories scattered around the different resorts that add in a jacuzzi tub here and there. If you want a swim out suite, they're currently only at Ventus. Maybe the new Ha building will have some swim outs, but the current buildings do not. The new addition wasn't finished during my last visit, and I don't know the details or the ETA on that one. Ventus Ha has the most connecting room options of any of the three, so if you want your room to connect, you will have the best chance of getting it at Ha. The Hotel Marina suites are the oldest, and the Ventus Ha are the newest, but the older suites are routinely upgraded, so it's unlikely to be a significant issue. My favorite room that I have stayed at over all six trips to this entire complex is a two bedroom oceanfront suite on the marina side overlooking the Scaramanga bar and the beach. Honestly, I haven't stayed in a bad room, just multiple different sizes. If you want a beachfront with ocean views, then you'll need to look at platinum club rooms at either Hotel Marina or Ventus. And I would lean heavily towards Ventus for that one. The beach activities like Hobie Cats, paddle boards, kayaks are all off of the Ventus half of the beach. If you want tropical views, then the entry level junior suites or the family suites at Hotel Marina are set off to the side of the resort beside a natural waterway in the mangroves. Ventus Ha is completely within the mangroves and it's uber tropical. So if you're not a beach person, then Ha is really where it's at. Ventus really doesn't have a lot of tropical vibes. It's more beach and pool focused. If you are a people watcher, then Hotel Marina El Cid is where you want to be. The main pool is the most active and lively on the complex. Crazy hour is not only fun to participate in, but it's really fun to watch. The lobby area is the largest with a really cool sunken bar that's usually very lively in the evenings. Conversely, if you're a reader and you enjoy a quieter, more adult-oriented atmosphere, then Ventus Ha will be more your speed. You could spend your morning at the Ha pool, then go to Akat for a relaxing a la carte lunch, then spend the afternoon up at Roof and end with a sunset before heading to clean up and change for dinner. Nice. Ventus is a nice blend between the two if you have people in your group who enjoy quiet as well as active. There are bars spread out throughout the complex at all three resorts, and like the restaurants, you have access to all of them with the exception of Platinum Club lounges, unless you've booked Platinum Club, of course. There are plenty of bars, so you don't have to access the Platinum Club lounges. I don't really think that you will notice that anything's lacking. There are evening activities and shows that take place over on the Ventus property. Usually the 8 p.m. show is somewhat more childlike in theme, and the 9 p.m. show is geared to a bit of an older group. 
They are often performed outside on the grassy area near the Convention Center and the Mercado de Dolores. So if you want close proximity to the nightly shows and entertainment, then Ventus might be your first choice. There's a musician almost nightly in the Waves Bar at Ha. There is often a band playing after dinner in the Hotel Marina lobby. The bar in the Ventus lobby is adults only and turns into a bit of a nightclub it open until 1 a.m. There's a kids club available from 9 to 9 for children's ages 4 to 11, and that's also on the Ventus property in a building off the side of the lobby. That may be a decider for you when staying there. There's a teen club area for teens 12 to 17, and that's right off the Hotel Marina lobby, and the teens club is in addition to that jumping rock pool that might lead you to prefer to stay at the Marina El Cid side. A quick note that all kids within the correct ages can participate in the kids or teens club no matter which resort you choose to stay at. If you want to make use of the kids club, inquire on the procedure when you check in. Unlike the teens, the teens club, the kids club is not just a drop-in club. Parents or guardians need to sign their kids in at specific times and pick up at specific times. Kids just can't walk over and sign themselves in or out. When we were last there with little ones, they gave parents a pager to contact them if there was an issue and they needed the parents to come back. You can also hire an on-site babysitter no matter which resort within the complex you choose. They will babysit your kids in your room until 1 a.m. for a fee. There is a spa for the complex located between Marina El Cid and Ventus. There are two fitness centers, one just off of the spa and the other on the Ha property and there are a couple of gift shops and gift huts scattered throughout the complex. If you're booking strictly on price and you're open to staying at any of the three resorts within the complex, I want to tell you about some perks that not too many people know about. We find this entire complex to be a good option for a more reasonably priced family all-inclusive resort. At the time of this video, and for several years in the past, El Cid offers a great promotion of kids under 12 are free when staying with a paying adult. Yes, you heard me, free. To add a cherry on top of this promo, there is a discounted rate for kids between 12 and 17 because they can't drink yet. If you've raised teenage boys, then you know it isn't because they don't eat as much as an adult. Just saying. So two adults taking two kids only pay the price of the two adults and kids under 18 are also discounted. When you actually look at the total for your trip when compared to other family resorts, even when they're priced the same price per night, your costs at El Cid often end up being significantly less. And this is not a common thing for all inclusive resorts to offer. Most of the time resorts charge one price per person for everyone over three years of age, depending on your room category. Value for dollar, it's important to look at total costs when pricing out a family all-inclusive resort vacation. Put El Cid on your list when you're pricing out resorts. This is probably one of the best perk from this resort group that I've seen. If you are flexible about everything else, then simply total up your stay at either Hotel Marina, Ventus, or Ha and pick wherever you get the best bang for your hard-earned dollar. There are some tips I have found valuable over the years that I want you to know about, especially because you've stuck with me so far into this video. Hotel Marina El Cid is located right next to the El Cid Marina, and it's an actual fully functioning marina. The marina restaurant is located at the actual marina. So if you have any fishing or snorkeling excursions planned, or even thinking about it, then it's easy to do from the El Cid resorts. There's no need to plan on transportation or coordinate your entire day around it. Ask at the activities desk or just walk over to the marina and see what's being offered. Sometimes when you plan an hour long snorkeling trip, it ends up taking up most of your day because you need to be picked up your resort, then bus to different resorts to pick up other people. Then you coordinate and get everybody meeting at the dock. And then finally you go out snorkeling for an hour only to reverse it all and go back home to your resort. At El Cid, because the actual marina is part of the resort, you are able to cut out all of that transportation hassle and just show up for your time. It is so much easier. Dolphinus Dolphin Experience is also located right at the marina, so if this is something you're interested in, but you're not sure if you're staying at the El Cid complex, you can simply walk over and have a look at it before booking. See if it's something you actually want to do. Some of us from our group did book the experience at Delphinus, but only when we went over and had a look at what was, it was actually like. 
Now, a final tip I want to share is that the marina has a laundromat. If you have an unfortunate incident with clothing, or you only pack carry-on and you want to freshen things up, or you have let your kid pack for themselves and it didn't quite go as well as you had hoped, yeah, when you know, you know. The laundromat is right there at the marina. Most people don't know it's there, but now you do. My last tip is concerning late checkout. If you have a late flight back home, there are two things that I want you to know. The first is that unlike some of the Hyatt properties or the next door grand residence, there is not a fee for staying at the resort later after you've checked out. You're free to enjoy the facilities until your airport transfer comes to pick you up. We were shocked earlier this year with a hefty bill upon checkout because we had an evening flight home and they required us to buy a day pass in order to stay past 3 p.m. If you've watched our Hyatt Salar Riviera Maya video, then you already know. El Cid may nickel and dime you with resort fees and Wi-Fi fees, but they don't charge you in order to stay later in the day while you wait for your transfer. On this same note, if you do have a late flight, there are also shower facilities over at the marina, so you're able to shower and clean up before departing for home. There are so many handy little things over at that marina and no one really knows about them. So I hope now that you do, you have a bit of peace of mind and less stress if you choose to stay at the El Cid Spa and Beach. To wrap up, I want to summarize some highlights and some cons that our team listed when we were brainstorming the script for this video, particularly the pros and cons for parents. Number one, the stay at one and play at three is a really nice feature at this price point, especially without a la carte dining limitations. Number two, the beach is in a great area for a nice beach walk. You can continue past the actual marina and then go past the Grand Residence Resort and keep going. It's a gorgeous area if you enjoy a morning beach walk. Number three, the bike tour from the entertainment or activities team into Puerto Morelos is really fun. Number four, Ventus Ha has a crossing guard helping people cross the street. So if someone in your group has to go back to the room because they forgot something, the crossing guard is there to stop traffic if it's needed. It's just a little peace of mind. Number five, the ability to have suites for larger families is really unique. Many resorts have the option of connecting rooms, but not many have two and three bedroom suites. You do need to book these well ahead in order to get one, but they are pretty special. Number six, one of the best resorts we have ever been to for those with mobility issues. But of course, not all is perfect and there are some downsides to this resort complex we want you to know about. Number one, the Wi-Fi fee, that's oh, just ridiculous. And number two, the resort fee, equally ridiculous. Number three, the timeshare. I wouldn't, but if you're into an aggressive sales pitch, then fill your boots. Number four, dinner reservations are required, and that can be annoying to some who prefer to dine whenever the mood strikes them. But to play devil's advocate, it does eliminate the possibility of having to wait for a table with tired and hungry young kids. So it does serve a useful purpose. Number five, towel cards are annoying to some people. Number six, the wristband isn't your door key yet. It has an RFID. Seems redundant to me, but whatever. And number seven, only one pool is heated in the winter months, but the hot tubs are heated as well. All in all, when you compare family resorts within the same price range as El Cid properties, then we have found that they offer a good experience and a lot of value. Are they amazingly awesome? No, of course not. They are luxury on a budget. You can spend a lot more at other family resorts, but for this price point, El Cid is definitely one to look at, in my opinion. We have spent a lot of time at the three different resorts within this complex, and we have created several videos about all three distinct and individual properties, going into more details about the suites, the restaurants and their menus, the cuisine, as well as our thoughts and experiences staying at each of them. If you decide that El Cid Spawn Beach Resort is worth your money, we hope this video helps you narrow down which resort within the complex is where you want to be. Thanks so much for watching our videos. Please hit the thumbs up and share it with someone you know who may be thinking about booking an all-inclusive vacation. We have lots on our channel that you might find helpful. 
We have also reviewed many adult-only all-inclusive resorts, so when you're looking to book a kid-free vacation, then remember to check out those videos as well. We have five new resorts coming up on the channel, Hyatt Vivid Grand Island in Cancun, Ibero Star Joya Rose Hall in Jamaica, Ibero Star Selection Rose Hall Suites, Ibero Star Waves Rose Hall Beach, and finally, we will be back to one of my personal favorite resorts, Excellence Riviera Cancun. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our reviews about those resorts. We are not sponsored and we pay for all of our own trips. The resorts never recognize us and we do not tell them that we make videos about our experiences. We strive to put out honest and authentic videos about our true experiences so that you can better decide which resorts are worth your hard earned money. Happy vacation planning, have a great week and we'll be back soon with more new travel escapes.